If you find yourself with a camera in your hand and want to learn how to use it, please subscribe to this channel, like the videos, comment below. Hey Protoss family, I gave you a demonstration of how to attach and what the umbrella looked like open on an umbrella strobe, but I'm going to show you how it works actually attaching it and what it looks like being used in this video right now, being used to light me for a video. It's not going to strobe. I, could, uh, I, I can actuate another umbrella strobe so that you see what it looks like. But uh, this is a video camera, not a still camera, so it's not going to uh, give you what the, the one frame, one one hundredth or one one twenty fifth of a second is going to look like with the amount of light that it needs for the ISO setting, the shutter speed and the aperture for the lens. So. Uh, as best as I can, I'm going to show you exactly what the umbrella does. And if you think about what the light looks like on me right now, you're going to see that there's a major light up here. You can tell that by the intensity when I point over that direction. And you see that against my hands. There's also a, a brighter side to my face, if you notice that. There's also a, a much more condensed light over here, something that's not covered over like a softbox would be to that, that uh, modeling lamp. But this umbrella strobe over here has uh, different attachments we'll talk about in a different uh, video, but uh, I'm going to use this light over here on a stand to illustrate and to show you what a, an umbrella looks like on that kind of light and how that modifies, softens, and, and throws the light in a much more broad direction than just using the uh, light modifier I have right now. So I'm going to bring these C-stand or the, excuse me, the, the light stand. And you see this here, this attachment here on, on this light is a very unique video styled Hollywood kind of thing. And there's a specific term to that we will get in another video. So stay tuned. All right, grab my umbrella here as we went before in a different video showing you about It locks, got a good snap out of it, and it doesn't want to stay. There we go. I like that better. Okay, so the attachment for the umbrella here is just under the light, and you insert the umbrella under that light, make sure it's square, and it has a pressure fitting, so it's gonna be a little bit hard to push in, but once you get it pushed, you can go through the back under here and make sure that it's all the way through and it's not going to slip out forward or backward on you. I'm gonna adjust that slightly upwards so that the umbrella is not pulling the light down and to give you a full side view here I'm going to pull the umbrella further in so that it has less light spray outside that umbrella there we go so you can see here against me I'm coming up to the edge of the umbrella here and there's a little bit of light of light coming up to the edge of my face excuse me so with that uh, that visual, there's going to be some light coming outside the edge of the umbrella over here, but there's not going to be a lot because it's not uh, not spread apart as much from the edge of the umbrella. Now, I'll just scoot this back. You can see from this edge of my face, from what it was at the beginning of this video, this light with this umbrella is now much more uh, dim but it's also not as uh, harsh and direct as it was before because it was just with that other light modifier on there. This is an umbrella which spreads the light out much more. So there is still a little bit of a dark shadow because this light, is the modeling lamp is not as intense as this modeling lamp. But the, the shadow is smaller and slightly not as deep as it was before. The highlights on the edge of my face are not as harsh and open because that bare modeling lamp bulb is not shining directly on my face and making that side of my face wash out more. There is a little bit more even lighting around my face because there's a, a light diffuser on the modifier umbrella here and there is a light box over here, but the light box itself, which we'll get into a little bit more, is uh, able to, to spread and diffuse the light, but it is more intense because of the backing behind it as well. So. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you've been enjoying the light modifiers for your strobes and how you can add light to your photographs, how each light modifier has a specific characteristic that it portrays and it gives uh, a 
in essence, a voice to that light and how you can create a, a story and the information behind the style of photograph that you want to create because of the lights you use and how you modify that light. Give us a comment down below of what you learned, what you like, and, and questions you may have about light modification. And join our, our Photos family by subscribing and give us a thumbs up so that other people can watch the video as well. Thank you so much. God bless.